The inevitable has happened, and Damakin Sue agrees in principle to go to the Miami Dolphins. He's no longer a Lion. That can be official on Tuesday. He signs for a massive contract, six years, $114 million, $60 million guaranteed. It trumps J.J. Watt. That's that free agency, free market jumping in there. Way too much money. Sigh of relief for me. And I think ultimately the Dolphins saved the Lions from the Lions because the Lions had offered a contract similar. Six years, $102 million, $58 million guaranteed. Still north of J.J. Watt money. The Dolphins, they did us a favor, Lions fans. You don't have to overpay for that defensive tackle now. That's absurd money. That's crazy money. How can you build a team with a defensive tackle that makes $19 million a season? That's what the Sioux contract's going to be. There are 17 teams in the league that spend less than that on their defensive line. And now Miami's doing it with one player. This is a sigh of relief for me as a Lions fan. I don't have to worry about pooling all my resources into one player on the defense at a position, while that can be disruptive, is not a position that's premier enough to, to value that kind of money. Well, I think the two words that I was attaching to this and you used there were inevitable and sigh of relief. I think today it was inevitable. We had all saw it coming with with Ndamukong Sue leaving the Lions. We had talked about it for, I mean, all the way back, dating back to early on in last summer that uh, this was going to be an issue for the Lions, and it's come to fruition now that he's not going to be, well, at least until Tuesday when it becomes official. And I know there's some reports out there that maybe the Lions are still holding please, on to hope. Please, you know, Maybe come he'll back. come to his senses. Give me a break. Come to his senses and take less money? Yeah, and play for a team that he doesn't want to play for. So that's that's a little crazy. But uh, I think it's easier now, though, and the reason why I say a sigh of relief, I think it's easier today than it has been in weeks or months past to finally look at that cap number that you're going to have available now. Because I think everybody was still holding on to maybe 20 30% of hope that he was going to be back. And now – it's set in stone, or at least enough stone, soft stone, that he's it's not like going to be there. Yeah, it's like clay. It's some some type of loam. Sure, yeah. Sure, yeah. $17 millions in cap space now, and you can finally look at that number and start applying it to other players, I think, is the biggest thing. And when Sue was potentially still in place, you weren't able to do that because you were still holding on to hope. So I think today it was inevitable. It's a sigh of relief that you can finally move on from Adamic and Sue. But I think everybody out there that's saying, boy, this is a great day. They didn't pay him. That's fine. You can go ahead and say that because I think both of us are saying that. It is a great day because it's, it's a day that's finally come here, and you can finally move forward without Adamic and Sue on your roster. But he's still a top three to five defensive player in the whole league. It's not a great day to lose that player, but it is a great day to finally be moving on. Yeah, but the Lions, they're kind of safe from themselves, though, right? Because the Lions did want to hand him this kind of money, which you and I were not, money. were not comfortable doing, right? No. And I think the Lions still have good players on defense. They have B and B-plus guys. I like Lover Quinn. I think James Ahedebo played really well. Ziggy Ants is a guy I like. DeAndre Levy, top linebacker. Tullett coming off the ACL, and you don't know what's going to happen with Nick Fairley, but you have those pieces. They have B and B-plus guys on that defense. J.J. Watt's better than Sue, correct? Yes. Okay. J.J. Well, Watt's... Def defensive ends will mean more, okay. typically, no matter what. J.J. Watt's defense last year was the 16th best defense in the NFL. Why? There's not much around him. Oh, so then it really does matter the players around in Dominic and Sue. I think there's the opinion out there that losing Sue decimates you. You become a bottom third defense. I don't think so. I don't think with the players you have, you become a bottom third defense. I think you've got guys now that can still step in and make you a good defense. And if you use that money appropriately, maybe update your defensive end position, a cornerback position, maybe a couple guys, interior guys. you got to fill the void at least some. I'm not diminishing Sue. Top defensive tackle in football, like you said, one of the top five defensive players in the league. This is a contract he should have got because he was a free agent. Someone was going to pay him, just not my team. If I'm a Lions fan, I don't want this contract on the books. I can do better. One player is not worth $19 million on defense. I'd argue outside of a franchise quarterback, nobody should be making more than $15 million a year. Well, then Calvin John shouldn't make it then. I would agree. I okay. think he's overpaid. Yo, he, yeah, he is. And I think that's the natural look. I mean, wide receiver, yeah, he's a freak, but he's he's going to get to a point where that contract's going to start to look really bad. And you could have said if you didn't have him, you might be able to swallow getting a Dominican Sue. So for all the people out there that would rather have Sue than Calvin Johnson, it's the Calvin Johnson contract that makes it difficult. $20 million hit. Well, and for Sue now, his cap hit a $19 million. It's going to make it a situation where Miami's going to have a tough time building. That's 12% of the salary in a sport where you got to play 22 guys, starters on offense and defense, special teams in there, kickers. you got to fill in depth. Rotate guys on the defensive line, backups on the offensive line. Sue makes it difficult to build a team. You have to pay a quarterback, and you have to pay Sue. How do you build that team? The Lions are rid, are rid of that. They don't have to worry about that. So good day or bad day for you? Good day. It's a good day for me. Now, how are they going to use this money? They have to use it well. 
But that's, I think that they have the opportunity now. They're not sunk into Indomitian Sioux. That's the biggest thing for me because I think w- we all looked at it when, when Jim Schwartz was fired the same way. It was, yay, hooray, the Lions are moving on, no more Jim Schwartz. It's a great day. you got to take a step back. It's only a great day if the right hire was made. And with Jim Caldwell, it was made, at least from this point. But, I mean, you can't fire Jim Schwartz and just automatically get better as a football team. You have to make the moves necessary to become better. And that's the next step after – Sue moves on. You have to become better and make the correct moves as an organization spending that $17 million in cap space. So just because Sue is gone, that's all and well, that's good by itself because you have that money left over. But the good moves and the and the proper moves need to be made now. And so it's a wait and see day as well for me. So it's a sigh of relief, but it's also a wait and see because you got to wait and see what the moves are going to be made moving forward for the Lions. Because if they're the wrong moves and the defense regresses, then it's not a great day that Sue's gone. But if they make the correct moves and the defense does get better next year and they add a corner, they add a linebacker, they go get a D-tack on the draft and the defense does become better without Indomitian Sue, then hooray, it's a great day. But we'll wait and see until that point.